Welcome to the Success Sensei Podcast for anyone interested in success, happiness, and balance. We'll teach you how to be a black belt at life. And now, your host, former professional fighter, multiple world champion, entrepreneur, and investor, Robert Devan. Bowing in, this is Roundhouse Rob, the Success Sensei, helping you to win at life one kick and punch at a time. Episode 273. 99% of people are decent and simply trying to get by. It's the Success Sensei Podcast main event. 99% of people are decent and simply trying to get by. Yes, I'm recording remotely again. This is the third episode in a row. I'm recording remotely only because it's easier to do it. That's the great thing about podcasting and recording audio. You can do it from wherever. There's not as much preparation. So it's easier to be consistent. Not like if you're doing video or something like that. So I'm sure it doesn't matter to you if there's a little bit of background noise or it sounds a little bit different to other episodes. The message is still exactly the same. Let's get into it. 99% of people are decent. What does that mean? Um, I'm not sure if that's a a very Irish expression, decent or sound. 99% of people are decent or sound. It basically means 99% of people are good, um, are on the good side of the spectrum. Um, And they're simply trying to get by. They're simply trying to get on with the things. They're simply trying to get food on the table, a roof over their head, means to support themselves and their family, clothing, etc, etc. It's not all necessarily based on greed and underhandedness. Um, And that's what I base my whole plan for this episode is to restore your faith in humanity a little bit, um, which ultimately will help you to navigate the world in a healthier and happier mindset, which ultimately will help you to attract the same to yourself as you're giving out into the world, which ultimately will help you achieve the things that you want to achieve and will help others achieve the things that they want to achieve. And then everybody is happier and healthier. Right. So let's let's say 99% of people are, you know, basically, you know, decent people, basically good people. They they mean well. Um and and that might be a way higher uh, percentage than you think. Obviously this is opinion based, but your opinion will determine how far up the success ladder you're going to go yourself. So be very careful what percentage you think people are good. If you think if it's a 50-50% Um, chance that some people are good and some people are bad. How do you think you're going to respond to the next new person that you meet? You might have a bit of trepidation. You might be a little bit reserved. You might treat them differently. You might, you might put barriers in place to make it hard for you to, you know, develop a healthy and happy, uh, mutual, um, uh, mutually successful relationship going forward. If you're, you know, if you if you have such a large percentage of people in a bracket that you think, you know, they could potentially be bad or or try to pull the wool over your eyes or try to, you know, pull a fast one or get the better of you, etc., etc. Ninety nine percent of people are not out to do that at all. As I said, back to the the caveman and cavewoman days, 99% of people are literally just trying to put food on the table, clothes on their back and a roof over their head. Um, Everyone has a different uh, definition of what exactly that means, what type of house, uh, what type of roof over their head, what type of clothes on their back, what type of food on the table, but essentially it is all the same. So, it's very important, as I said, to restore your faith in humanity because the new, we're trying to combat against the news and against the media and against, you know, social media. Um, at the moment, it's in the news about the Facebook whistleblower. And a part of it is that the algorithm for Facebook, um, has been more on the side of negative news. Now, that's probably, I wasn't shocked to hear that, uh, that negative news sells more than, than positive news stories do. So keep that in mind that the amount of news that we're consuming or even passively consuming is turning us against our fellow person nearly. I mean, it it would have us think that more people, a higher percentage of people are bad people and not decent people. And that is a hard mindset to get your head into because you can feel in competition with your fellow human being. You can, you as I said, you can meet people and you can be a little bit more reserved or, you know, you can be... 
you can hold back a lot. You can, you might even get to know them because you, you have the emotional barriers of, 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 of fear of your fellow person. And we're always pitted. Men are pitted against women, different races, different religions, different countries, etc., etc., etc. We're, but you'll find that I've certainly found that when I've gone to other countries and you know, I was in, you know, impoverished enough areas that people were so nice. They were genuinely so nice and so helpful. Um, I shouldn't have been surprised by that, but I guess, you know, I haven't always had the mindset that I'm trying to talk to you about right now. And I'm still trying to cult cultivate um, in myself at the same time while, while I, I'm suggesting it to you. You know, it's very common for us to immediately think the worst of others, to be distrusting. I'm not saying bury your head in the sand. I'm not saying that there's there's not bad people out there. I am absolutely not saying to protect yourself, but I'm saying that the threat is nowhere near as strong um, as you're probably imagining in your mind, that the majority of people, the high majority of people are decent human beings. If something was to happen and you genuinely needed help, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, be, be, I suppose you shouldn't rely on someone to help you. I mean, that, that's one of the things you want to be as reliant as, as self-reliant as possible as, um, because if something bad were to happen, you may be disappointed. So you want to make sure that you're able to get yourself in the, the mindset and, and the physical ability to be able to look after yourself in any situation just in case no help came your way, but you could be shocked at the amount of, and grateful at the amount of help um, that can come your way in certain circumstances. So I suppose plan for the worst, hope for the best is a, is a good mantra to live by. And that includes, you know, uh, people coming to your aid um, if you needed them. So we always think the worst of others, I suppose, like it's easier to turn our anger towards somebody else than it is, you know, to, to get mad at ourselves or to hold ourselves accountable. I suppose the most obvious one that comes into my mind as I'm talking about this is, you know, a car accident. If there's a bit of a car accident, it's very easy to immediately turn the anger into another person, even if neither party was particularly at fault. Uh, both parties are going to try to level fault at the other or immediately get mad or immediately feel slighted or hurt as a direct result of of the other person it's it's like i think there was extensive psychological studies that you know they monitored people tripping over on the footpath sidewalk for the american listeners and that person immediately looked around uh, to try to nearly find somebody that they could blame or scowl at um, I think part of that was probably embarrassment as well. They wanted to make sure that nobody saw, saw them trip. But, uh, you know, they reckon that a, a good bit of it as well is to try to attribute blame to somebody else or, you know, who who left it there or what, what happened that made me fall over as opposed to blaming ourselves. Um, we've all gone through the hormonal teenage chip on the shoulder, angry days, maybe You've held on to it for longer than most. Maybe you've revisited those days. That's okay. But just have a think about what we're talking about at the moment. There's far too much competition and comparing with other people. Maybe that's a part of it as well. Um, it is absolutely possible going forward to have long-term business relationships as well as every other type of relationship with people. That is a win-win scenario. That both people are happy both um, relationships are fruitful and it can be a win-win scenario, especially in business. Harder to achieve that if you believe that, you know, 50-50, um, good to bad um, in, in the population of people or, or even less. You think that, you know, 70 percent or even you think that 99 percent of people are bad and only one percent of people are good. It's going to be hard to find that win-win scenario. If you get a quick win at, you know, the detriment to, to, to of, of somebody else's goals, then how many times do you think going forward they're going to want to do business with you? You haven't, you've, you might have closed the sale, but you absolutely have not opened the relationship. There's a lot to be said for, you know, strangers or, or friends that you haven't met yet. I mean, our own confidence can affect how we interact with others. But it's a hell of a lot easier if we, if our underlying belief is that 99% of people 
are decent and they're simply trying to get by. Just as you are, just as I am, just as all of us. As I said, there's different levels to it, but that's essentially what we're trying to do. Um, reap what you sow. Whatever, whatever way you respond to people. If you... If you're going around and you have, you know, that resting, what do they call it? Rest, resting bitch face, a resting bastard face. If that's how you look, then how do you think people are going to respond to you? Are they going to want to initiate conversation with you? Now, that's just, a, that's a that's a physical condition. There mightn't be much that you can do uh, regarding that apart from actually smiling a bit more. But what happens if you're going around with a resting bitch or a resting bastard mentality? You know, that's a whole different other game. People can sense your energy. They can sense your fear of them. They can sense your apprehension to meet other people. And it, and it doesn't make it easier to interact with you. As I said, I'm not saying bury your head in the sand and don't realize that there are bad people and bad circumstances out there. But it's just not at the rate that you ordinarily would think. If you open your heart a little bit more, if you're a little bit more compassion compassionate, if you're a little bit more sympathetic to others, if you can, you know, imagine what they're going through or imagine that they could be going through other things, it makes it easier to interact and it makes, you know, your interactions healthier and happier for you. Um, you will actually gain from this as well. So it's not just, it's not just hippie mentality. I mean, you will actually achieve the things that you want to achieve. You'll connect with people a hell of a lot better, which ultimately was going to help you help them and, and help the world. So have a quick think about how you have categorized the majority of people in your life. Are you fearful of others? Um, are you distrustful of others and what percentage? How are you interacting? Have a, have a quick look and have a quick, um, tally up of where you think you're at. Maybe you want to change it. Maybe you're happy with where you're at. That's totally fine as well. And um, maybe you will want to review it on a regular basis. See where you're at. See how you're feeling and um, catch yourself if you find that you are reacting negatively to others and you, you might you might want to have a, a quick relationship health check going forward. But I guarantee you, if you think about the times that you entered the world and you were a little bit more negative as opposed to the days that you that you're a little bit more positive, what what's the comparison of of the interactions that you've had throughout the day? I guarantee you on the on the positive, when you put the positive energy out there, you get it back a hell of a lot easier. You know, when you get up and you, and you know, whatever, maybe you've banged your toe off the, off the, the bed frame before you start your day and you've convinced yourself it's going to be a bad day and you walk around with your shoulders proving to yourself it's going to be a bad day. Your posture is slouched. Your mindset is waiting for the next bad thing to happen. What do you think is going to happen as opposed to, you know, you go out there, you give everybody the opportunity. You give, a, as I said, with compassion, with, with, you know, um, sympathy, um, with love. I know that sounds very hippie ish, but as I said, you will reap what you sow and like attracts like. And you might discover as well, as we're talking, that the majority of people are decent. And they're simply trying to get by exactly like you. And and if both of you um, can interact positively and help each other on that journey, then isn't that brilliant? So the very best wishes. Thank you for listening. I'm Roundhouse Rob, the success sensei. Life is a fight you can enjoy and win. Bowing out. This has been the success sensei. Fighting the winning fight. So add us, subscribe, like, and comment. Keep those hands up and keep moving forward.